If you struggle to draw shoulders, this video is for you. We're gonna look at the landmark lines and shapes to look for to help make sense of this really tricky area. And we're gonna to try to keep it as simple and doable as possible. Hi, my name's Kenzo and this is Love Life Drawing. So how do you guys see the shoulders? Maybe you see them as kind of just like the corners of the torso or just the, the bits on the edge. Or maybe they're like a ball stuck on the side of the torso, like on an action figure. I think in my time, both of these images of shoulders have been there in my subconscious. Our aim for this video is to change that and see the shoulder as part of a broader structure that wraps around the back and front of the torso with volume and depth based on three bones and three muscles. The shoulder is where the collarbones on the front and the shoulder blades or scapulas on the back and the bone in the upper arm meet each other. You can often see the lines of the collarbones on the front uh, and the ridge of the shoulder blades on the back. So they're really useful ones to look out for when you're drawing. Unfortunately, you usually can't see both of these lines at the same time. From the side or from above, you can sometimes see both, but generally you're gonna get one of these. Uh, but you can often see the trapezius muscle though. Do you remember that one from the neck video? This ridge along the top here creates a useful line to go with your collarbone or shoulder blade line. And you'll see it from most angles. You can often see this point where these bones meet. So you can actually feel this bony bit on your own shoulder. And even as your arm raises and your deltoid muscle here starts to stick out a bit more, that bony bit is still going to be there on the surface. Often this bit is visible on the figure and it becomes a useful landmark, a really useful thing to look for when you're drawing. It helps you to understand where the deltoid muscle starts. So wrapped around that bony point and stretching down the arm, is the big shape of what you normally think of when you think of shoulders, the deltoid muscle, this teardrop shaped muscle. It's a sort of rounded triangular shape and it wraps around the top of the arm, around that bony point, leaving that bony bit on the surface and it attaches to the collarbone on the front and the shoulder blade on the back. And it covers the head of the upper arm bone so you don't really see that bone but it's, that bone is there at the heart of the roundness of the deltoid muscle. And I haven't really thought of a good way to say this, but this muscle, the deltoid muscle, is really 3D. It wraps all the way around. So be ready to capture that rounded volume, noticing where the tones change as the planes change and using that to create the volume in your drawing. The muscle of the chest, the pectoral muscle, comes in and attaches to the arm under the deltoid. I think sometimes it's easy to forget that this chest muscle is not just confined to the chest. The whole point of it is that it attaches to the arm and moves the arm around. The lines from the chest muscle then are going to stretch up with the arm when the arm raises. So that's something to look out for. Sometimes, especially when the arm is raised a little bit, that chest muscle, the pectoral and the deltoid kind of flow into each other and you can pretty much draw them as one shape. Other times there's a clear distinction with a kind of a dip between the two muscles, creating a bit of a tonal change in that area. So that's something to look for as well. Just before we continue, I just wanted to let you guys know about the free guide we have at lovelifedrawing.com. It's called Life Drawing Success. Uh, and we also have a newsletter where every week we'll send out useful tips and extra information. So check those out if you haven't already. You can go sign up at lovelifedrawing.com slash success. Now the shoulders allow so much range of motion and it means that they change appearance quite dramatically. So each one is able to move independently of the other uh, they can move up and down, even without really raising my arm or anything. The shoulder itself can move up and down. And then obviously 
The arm itself can raise, and that changes the appearance of it. And as it raises, it can also rotate, which also changes the appearance. So you've got the shoulder itself moving up and down, and then the arm being raised and being rotated, all things that change the appearance of the shoulder, and that's why it changes so much. In any of these poses, the muscles will stretch and tense up in different ways. The bones also move around, and so the overall appearance changes dramatically. And that means you need to be open-minded about how the shoulder should look, how you should draw the shoulder, and you need to trust what your eyes tell you about it. Now, a quick side note relating to that, the lines that these bones create, they tell you a ton about the shoulders, but they can move around somewhat independently of the rib cage and of each other. And that means they don't necessarily tell you about the angles of the rib cage or the angle of the spine. Like the line created by the collarbones here or between the shoulders here, they're on different angles to the rib cage. If you want to know what angle the rib cage is on, look for that torso center line or the spine line or look at the arch that the rib cage creates. Often there's a lot of information presented to your eyes and looking for these lines and shapes gives you a nice starting point for the drawing. But if you're not sure about what you're seeing, you know, like, is that the shoulder blade? I don't know. You know, I wouldn't worry too much. The point of using these lines is to make sense of what you see. It's not to confuse you even more or make you feel like you don't know what you're doing. Ultimately, your eyes are already giving you the information you need to draw the figure, whether your brain fully understands it or not, you know, at least when we're talking about drawing from observation. See the lines and shapes abstractly and draw what you see. On the other hand, sometimes having some of this basic anatomical knowledge can help reduce confusion. Sometimes your eyes can struggle to pick up on what's going on, especially when things become quite subtle, like they have here. What do you draw here? What marks should be made? What should be brought out? It all seems quite smooth. Well, Mako here, she knows about the shoulder blade and that helps her to see that line and add it to her drawing. And it helps bring a nice sense, I mean, she's exaggerated it extra for this demonstration, but that line helps bring a nice sense of definition and clarity to the drawing. So to summarize, you'll often be able to see either the lines of the collarbones or the shoulder blades and the trapezius and the bony point that they lead to. And that helps you to see where the rounded teardrop shaped deltoid muscle starts and understand where the bone in the upper arm is starting to. And you wanna capture the volume of that muscle, the deltoid, paying attention to where the tones change on it to give that sense of volume. And you wanna remember that the chest muscle is gonna come up too and attach to the arm. So that's another line to pay attention to. Check out some of our other videos. We got loads of good stuff on the channel and we got loads of good stuff coming out over the next few months so if you haven't subscribed yet then definitely do so and it would really help us out if you hit the like button to let YouTube know that this is a good video.